It says third biggest pharmaceutical company, Cipla MedPro, earlier this month reported an 83% increase in full year headline earnings per share to 80 cents, saying its hedging policy had offset the challenges posed by tough economic conditions. Cipla announced a final dividend of 7.5 cents, up from 6 cents in 2011. And Phil, let's tie in here Adcock with Cipla because I think Adcock's troubles really started when this furore broke out after their attempt to. Uh, maneuver a hostile takeover of Cipla MedPro. Right, and and I still think Cipla has a weak shareholder base, and and going forward could potentially be a takeout target. Uh, a very attractive company, a very simple company relative to Adcock and to Aspen, in that they they really take the licenses from Cipla India and uh, get them through registration, market them, supply them in the South African market. Um, I think the the stock is cheap at the moment. Um, but I think short-term cheap. I do worry what that... What PE are we looking at on Cipla? We're looking at about eight, nine times PE at the moment. Um, so I think that relative is, is very cheap. Um, so uh, my one concern with Cipla is the reliance on perhaps Jerome Smith as MD and, and the, as the founder of the business. His relationships are, are what drives the business, his relationships back to Cipla India. Um, and Cipla India scuppered that deal with Adcock Ingram, yeah. if I remember correctly, in terms of the news flow. Would yeah. that be a fair assessment? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but as I said, I think Cipla is still out there, um, and I think it's it's got a very good business, a very good generic uh, business. Uh, these last results disappointed. Um, there's no doubt, margin was slightly down. Uh, headline earnings, when you strip out the the, the win, the lawsuit win with Pfizer, came in at about 11. Um, the um, this, you said it was a 9 PE, is that correct? Yeah, 9, t nine times PE, yeah. So, Paul, mm. you don't look at PEs. You don't care whether it's cheap or expensive or what, what. Yeah, no, we're totally If you uh, want exposure beyond Aspen. In terms of our approach to the market. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, when you say they're the third biggest, that's like saying Aspen is like the Blue Bulls rugby club. Cipla Medplo is the equivalent of like Villagers club side in Cape Town. 50 billion market cap as compared with like a 2 billion market cap. It is a simple business and it is well positioned and they have got good registrations and they have done well considering where they started reversing through the Inalene sort of shell. But I agree with Phil that relationship with Cipla India and they basically, Cipla India basically went behind their backs and talked to a whole lot of people then decided that they wouldn't do a deal. So it all looks a bit messy. It doesn't and sound like a very cohesive management structure. Yeah, and earnings are a bit Med choppy Pro, and Jerome's Africa. own stake is, is offshore and how that happened is some people wonder about. And, and Jerome so seems very volatile in terms of his uh, <laughs> press comments. Uh, am I the only yes, one who, no, who thinks exactly. that? And the market doesn't necessarily hold that against people. But what, as you know, the market likes the most is companies that deliver on their promises and which deliver secular, steady growth, you know, not up, down, up, down and all over the show. But the potential takeover target aspect of this could be a, a winner for an investor. At Absolutely. six rand fifty one, come in, yeah. corporate action is going to rally. Absolutely. I mean, I agree. Longer term, I want to be in Aspen, but short term, I think there's an opportunity with Cipla. Absolutely. Do you think Adcock could come back, or, or do you think that they're, they're, they're too shy? They've had their fingers burned. Uh, yeah, I think it's that. that who knows? But I think it's if, if I'm right that Adcock's going to move more towards the over the counter type of, of products, the, the branded the stuff. Perhaps that's, that deal is now done and dusted, but uh, we, we never, we'll have to see. Two billion market cap is Actually, what you said. Actually, it's three. Three, three billion, billion, three billion market cap. Yeah. Please check your notes before you, <laughs> before you give me those stats. I just upgraded them by 50%. <laughs> but you, and now it is still the third biggest pharmaceutical company in yes. South Africa. I know, Aspen, are yes. your stats right there? 50 billion market cap. Is 48. That 48 billion market What's cap. What's two billion between friends, you know? Does that mean <laughs> that there's more room for players in the pharmaceutical industry in South Africa? Such a wide gap between the likes of an Aspen, Adcock, and a Cipla Med Pro, the third player. Absolutely, and I think international competition is coming in. Um, but what you do find is our three listed companies basically dominate the market, uh, but then it's very fragmented underneath. So there's plenty of opportunities for smaller deals down the road. Um, uh, Adcock's got a lot of cash on hand. I think they've got about 500 million sitting in the balance sheet. So there is opportunity for further deals. And if we really push the imagination, what about a tie-up between something like a Netcare and a Cipla Medpro? Would that work or I, am I really pushing I the barrel? I don't know, but I think the, ho the hospital groups tend to want to play even cards with the various product suppliers. But I want to pick up on that issue of the foreign possible role because, you know, in the old days, and by that I mean like four years ago, Generics was seen as the hot, hot, hot part of the market because there were all these fantastic drugs like statins and you know stuff for heart disease and cancer and whatever going ex-patent, ex-20 years. 
everybody got hell of excited, but it now looks as though globally all the pharmaceutical companies are competing with themselves, bringing out their own generic versions of things. So that sense of the huge opportunity has gone away a bit. So I do think people need to be mindful that the big global players are taking their markets in Africa and their markets in Latin America and all these other places much more seriously. Glaxo's strategy, which is one of those big giants, was to partner with Aspen, but I think all the others like Merck, Pfizer, and you know the Swiss Sanofi Aventis, all those other players are certainly taking this market more seriously than they were before, and that is a potential and threat. And South to Africa, government. along that vein of thinking, South Africa will be the entry point, as it is for many companies, into the African continent, the gateway onto yeah. the continent, so to speak. Yeah, absolutely. And and as as Paul said, uh, vice versa. Aspen is now going into other emerging uh, markets around the world, not only in Af Africa. Um, it, it basically is is Glaxo's distribution in, in emerging markets. Um, so yes, plenty of opportunity. And uh, I think Nigeria looks like a very interesting market for these for these guys. Um, and and there's expansion. Aspen's looking at other markets as well. Supplement Pro, hot or not, at just over six rand? No, not hot for me. Although I am struck by this idea that one should buy pharma companies before Easter, like you were saying earlier. What people are going to have hangovers from one end of the country to the other. What a great time to buy the shares. I like it that you now know the rules of the game, Phil. <laughs> hot or be, not? I hate to be boring, but short term hot, definitely. All three are hot for me at this stage.